Our Father in heaven, our Lord and Saviour, we come to you this morning in realization of who you are. The God of gods, the great King of the universe. Lord, the majesty and glory and honor belongs to you. But to us, shame of face, wickedness, Father. We do not deserve on our own to come before your throne, but also we realize that we have a mighty Savior, Jesus Christ, your Son. And this morning, Father, we take hold of his righteousness. And we believe, thee, Lord, that we are accepted in the Beloved, that you love us as you love your Son. And therefore, Lord, with all confidence, we approach your throne. For we love you too, Lord. And we pray in the name of Jesus, his mighty name, that as we open the scriptures this morning, you will speak to us. I, myself, as the preacher, I lay myself at your feet, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that as you spoke to Balaam, Lord, through a donkey, you will speak through me, dear Father. If you can speak through him, surely you can also use me. So, Lord, I lay myself before you, and I pray that no eyes will be fixed upon me, but that all eyes will be turned on Jesus, and that all love will be bestowed upon him. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I'd like us this morning to come to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. The verse that has been the subject of our meditation for the last uh, you know, couple of weeks, especially last week. Jesus says in, in Luke chapter 9 verse 23, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Last week we looked at the context of that, of that verse and we realized in the context that there are three uh, illustrations that Jesus uses to tell us what would happen if we are not willing to take up the cross and deny ourselves in order to follow him. But I'd like to show you in verse 27, last week we did not see verse 27, and this morning the Lord impressed me that verse 27 is as much a part of the, of the uh, context of verse 23 as the other verses. And verse 27 reads, But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. And my question was, as I read the text there, is why did Jesus change so abruptly from an invitation to take up the cross and deny ourselves to suddenly point some people and say, there are people here who will not, who will not die before they see the kingdom of God. And the truth is this, that only those who take up the cross, denying themselves and follow Jesus, will be able to see the kingdom of God. And the sad thing is, dear friends, that amongst the huge crowd that stood before Jesus, only a few would be able to see the kingdom of God because the rest would be completely unwilling to take up the cross daily and deny themselves. You see, friends, this is the stepping stone. Here it is where we stand or fall. As Jesus said it, if you want to keep your life, you will lose it. But if you want to lose your life for my sake, then you will receive it. Or what will it profit a man if he earns the whole world, if he forsakes the cross, that does not deny himself, and he just exalts himself, and he earns the whole world, but at the end, he loses his own soul. And then the third part of the invitation, for whoever is ashamed of me. When we are unwilling to surrender our life to the point of dying to self, and we are unwilling to take up the cross in order to follow Jesus, we are actually ashamed of Jesus Christ. And then Jesus says, For I tell you truly that some standing here will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. And dear friends are coming in His kingdom. The truth is that Though the invitation is so open and everyone could enter in, 
because we find the, the, the gate narrow and straight, so many are unwilling to pay the price, to count the cost. And so this morning I'd like to take the second part of this verse in verse 23. Last week we looked at when Jesus said, take up his cross daily. And we discovered that the cross is a covenant we made with Jesus, an acceptance where whatever comes, from the, whatever comes to our life, we will accept it as coming from the hand of God. doesn't matter what it is, whether it's life or death, whether it's riches or poverty, whether it's peace or, or war, whatever comes to our life, we will take it now as coming from God. And we will praise Him. And we will rejoice in this. That is the cross. The cross is a complete surrender of my life so that now if God chooses for me shame, persecution, if chooses for people to scorn me and laugh at me because of my decision, I will say nothing. I will take it patiently and I will praise Him and rejoice in Him. Now this goes completely against the grain of reason, isn't it? Because when someone steps on your toes, what is the natural reaction of man? We want to pay it back. And if, if, I, if I get sick, what is the first thing I say? Why me, Lord? Look, I pay my tithe. I come to church on Sabbath. And I do this, and I do that, and I do this. Why not the neighbor who eats pork and does this and does that? Why me, Lord? I am so righteous. Yes or no? That is the natural reaction of self. We want rights. We want the Lord to give us what is good, but not what is bad. But the cross, like Jesus took it, is a willingness, a surrender, a commitment that whatever the will of God is for me, I will take it without complaining. I will take it patiently, letting the Lord be Lord in my life. And that, let me tell you, will transform your life, will transform your home, and will transform our church. Unless this takes place, we will not go home. Because unless we are willing to take up the cross, you and I are not disciples of Jesus Christ. Let me say it categorically, categorically friends. There, do not deceive yourself. Unless you are taking the cross, unless you've entered into this commitment, you are not a disciple of Jesus Christ. You may be a seven-day Adventist, but you may not be a Christian. You may keep all the rules of the church, but unless the heart is surrendered and the life completely committed to Christ, you are not a disciple. You are not ready to see the, to see the kingdom of God. And so I consider that the subjects that I'm presenting, and that's why I'm extending myself on this area, because I want to present it clearly without any doubts so that you know exactly what you, what you need to do. And you will not be able to say, oh, my pastor did not explain it to me. I want everyone to know what it means to be a Christian and how to enter into the Christian life. Amen? Amen? After all, Jesus said it very clearly. He who is going to build a house must count the cost first. Because if he does not count the cost and he begins to build and then in the middle of the way he finishes because he cannot finish, he will become the ridicule of everyone. It is the same with the Christian life. If you enter into Adventism especially without not knowing what the cost is and halfway you, let, you throw in the towel and say it's not worth it, you have people around you, your family, your relatives, your friends who are not Adventists, who will laugh and scorn at Christianity because it doesn't work. True? Or you will live forever a limping Christianity, a Christianity that is half committed but not fully committed. And so people look at you and they want to have nothing with Christianity. Why? Because they, it's despised by the people. It's so horrible. 
A Christianity which is just full of forms, full of, uh, of things to do.